I like the mix of our bands. I think it's maybe not obvious that it would work well together, especially Shinviev Opam, who's playing first. That there, I never would have thought that her show would work so well with Earth, but when she has toured with them, just the two of them in the states, it's been amazing. It's been a lot of Earth fans who would probably never find her music otherwise, like older metal guys with like weird tattoos and a kilt and like really tall leather boots and just like these gnarly dudes so into her. Um, so I think that there's an interesting element, there's an interesting crossover between Earth fans, which are like all kinds of people actually. Sure. Yeah, it's... I'm still trying to find my place, I think, in the tour mix, but those guys definitely have a good chemistry. How do you think it went tonight, playing all new material? I mean, that's something that isn't foreign for you. You'll generally do new material when you have it, isn't that the case? It's true, yeah. I, I like to play new songs, but I'm. St- this is just the second show of the tour, and I'm still kind of feeling a little awkward about it. I haven't played shows in a long time. That's not true. I mean like six months or something, which is a long time for me. I've been in the recording mode, which is a totally different realm psychologically, and it's a totally different way of thinking about music. And I didn't practice enough before tour, I'm realizing. So I'm still a little bit uneasy kind of playing these songs. And actually, the guitar I was playing tonight, I just bought it today, like a block away. And so... I'm figuring that out as well (laughs) and yeah like one of those songs I literally have never played it before not even (laughs) by myself (laughs) I was just like well I know it's these two chords I think I remember the words and I just played it and so there's some of that going on I I actually kind of prefer this terrifying stage versus uh, once I get more familiar with things and it's then the challenge becomes trying to keep it alive trying to keep it uh, risky you've talked before about when you're writing having a certain visual counterpart in place or a tone or a color you know you mentioned there that it being a very different process recording and playing live can you connect to the lyrical inspiration when you're playing a song live I try to yeah I try and keep it in mind that's exactly how it is, though. When a song is new, it's it's much easier. It's actually harder to forget what you're talking about because you're mentally engaged with the words because you're remembering them and remembering the flow of the song and why this line comes before this line. But once you've played it a hundred times, then it becomes like this thing that your body just clicks into and you're just going through the motions, which is fine. I mean, maybe up from the outside, it's not easy to tell maybe it still sounds like the song but as a performer I prefer to be able to kind of I don't know in- inhabit the song a little more yeah yeah. it's like a well of sorts you know you mm-hmm. can only go back to it so many times it's true and I've always felt that way but then I've heard other people talk about it like playing the same songs for 20 years mm-hmm. and they can be like a vessel that you can use to fill with whatever emotions you feel like you need to express so maybe that's it's different kinds of songs perhaps or Mm. different types of performers that they have their classics and they just use them like as standards do you ever feel like you could go back to that stuff or, or revisit older material if you can leave the soil fallow if we can continue with bad metaphors you know you might find something new in an old crop of songs yeah and I have done that I, I in fact it can be really exciting to relearn old songs because they feel new yeah. so all of a sudden I've got all these new songs that are actually 15 20 I mean uh, 10 or 15 years old I don't have any 20 year old songs yet but um, I do that and I've kind of gotten over it over the years I used to be much more extreme about like if I'm not sincerely feeling the emotions, then I don't want to sing the song. Sometimes I can 
get over it and just sing the song and it's fun. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Hi, this is Mount Erie, and you're listening to Two States with Danny Carroll. What was the last song you wrote? Tell us about that. It's called Ocean Roar. It's actually the last song I played tonight. I was finishing up that album, Ocean Roar, and I just felt like it was missing one song. And the words are... Most of my songs... I mean, my the way I make music started as a recording project, and it still primarily is. There was a period where I wrote a lot of songs on guitar, and they were more folkish. You know, they were more about the song, the form of the song, and more focused on the words. So, yeah, when I first started making music as a teenager, it was all about recording. Having to write words for it came second. It was an annoyance. And um, I've kind of come back to that. Not that words are an annoyance now, but I'm primarily a studio yeah. time. And so I'm getting sidetracked from that, talking about that song in particular. But I've, I've written songs in a different way in the last couple of years while I've been working on these last two albums. I guess that's, the ch- that's why I feel awkward playing these shows still, because I haven't figured out how to convert that type of thing into something that works with a guy playing a guitar on a stage which is a totally different thing from my vantage point and also from other people in in the crowd at least the, the guitar playing was was really quite something special what we saw up there and, and you talking like you you just bought the guitar today right yeah <laughs> That's cr- I find that crazy because you seem to have such a control over the instrument and understanding of using certain colorings and t- mm-hmm. getting certain textures out of the guitar through where you're going to strum on it and, and strumming higher on the neck. And is that something that you still feel like you're exploring in a way is how to create a soundscape with the guitar and, and things like that? Well, yeah, for sure. I mean, if it seems like I'm, I have control over it, it's a hoax that's working. <laughs> <laughs> you fell for it. No, yeah. I, I mean, I do. I, I play with that a lot, and especially more recently I've been playing with the details of how a guitar works and how to touch it in different ways brushing it or 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 shredding on it with a pick yeah I didn't used to I've always played like a one dollar guitar my first guitar was just this garage sale guitar and I still have it it just doesn't stay in tune very well in different places on the neck, the notes aren't in tune. It's intonation, I guess. So, these new songs I'm playing, are, they kind of rely on beautiful chords happening. And it just, the discordant nature of my, my usual guitar wasn't really working for that. And so, I didn't bring a guitar on tour. And I've just been playing Genevieve's, which is fine, but I don't know. It's kind of eyeballing. It's my first time I have a nice guitar in my life. Like, at least expensive. Yeah. One that will hopefully stay in tune, at least. Well, maybe you'll get an endorsement from Burns.
this new studio space some friends and, and I in Anacortes where I live and it's in an old church and it's just this big beautiful wooden room that's really it's empty like all the pews are taken out and it's just resonant and so the types of sounds that work well in that space are um, well voices but also acoustic strings resonating like tune I've been experimenting with acoustic guitars tuned to resonant strings and multiple tracks of them or getting different guitar players together in, in one case and just having this, these drone high strings going. And a 12-string guitar like the one I got today kind of simulates that vibe. And that's the type of... It's kind a form of noise, but it's just more beautiful yeah. than distortion. And it's acoustic noise or something. Would you ever be interested, uh, I suppose this is a, maybe a silly thing to say, but your music, you have a certain elemental quality and, and there's references to nature. And I mean, would you ever consider using soundscape and found sounds in your music? Have you ever tried that? Yeah, it, it, it gets in there sometimes. Sometimes it's just because I've recorded in places that aren't soundproofed. <laughs> And a car drives by, or a bird is nesting on the roof. But yeah, and then also I've deliberately put on field recordings. The last song I recorded, just like two weeks ago, before I sent off the master tapes, it was pretty much all field recordings. I just needed this one minute transitional piece of sound, not even a song in between these two larger songs. And I was at the studio, and across the street from the studio is the park. It's a big, nice park, and the preschool kids get taken there every day in the middle of the day, and they run around and scream, and they were there, and it just was really nice out, and I opened the doors to the studio and just put the mic out the door and recorded a bunch of tracks of them over the top of each other, and that was... That was the sound. And then I played a couple of notes on the piano and said a very short poem. And it became a song. Is instinct the most important thing for you? I guess so, yeah. I guess you could call it that. I I usually just kind of go with the feeling or intuition. But yeah, instinct is another way of putting it. It's not quick. But... I also don't think I'm in danger of overthinking things. I mean, I was watching, somehow I ended up on what, this YouTube video of Steely Dan in the studio, and it was it just sounded so annoying to be around them. I don't know their music at all. I don't know why I was watching this thing, but they were talking about being so tight and getting to the point of perfection and doing things over and over and over and then pushing through and going beyond perfection into this higher level where it sounded natural again and that just sounded so idiotic to me so yeah it does i'm not fast i'm not um like a one take improviser i tinker a lot i mean it took me a year and a half to record this record but but I'm not Steely Dan either, yeah. so yeah. somewhere in between there. I'll no longer hide it. Yes, you move me to tears over and over. 
every time I get it settled, you excited. Every time I get my face dry, you sing. Hi, this is Mount Erie, and you're listening to Two States with Danny Carroll. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about um, solitude, because it's a theme you explored quite extensively on records. Do you think solitude itself, do you think it's underrated in ways, you know, because people kind of have a thing of no man is an island, but what's your take on, on solitude, I suppose? I like it, but I think it's personal. I mean, some people... It's it's a matter of taste, I think, or maybe it's a matter of chemicals, <laughs> brain chemicals. Because sure. some people it just doesn't work for them. Some people need to be around others. But yeah, for me, and I think for a lot of people, there's depth in there, and there's there's a lot of rewards to solitude. I I mean I think this songs I'm writing are still basically saying the same thing. <laughs> I think it's an important uh, message yeah. to, to to remind ourselves that everything is fleeting constantly. Everything is being destroyed and remade sim- simultaneously at all times. And yeah, it's easy to get fixated on creating a sense of permanence and comfort yeah and also that's just the way it feels for me to be alive I don't know if it's like that for everyone else but sometimes I feel really sharp and sometimes it's just like I can't wake up and I'm just wandering around for days People say arise, 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 live friend, live. I say die, I say shade yourself, I say shine what precious light you have into caves, and when it dies out stay, I say find Some people say to try and try and try Fight and save yourself I say give I say send them off I say shed whatever husk If you are right Say that. 
the sky, the sky, the sky, have you noticed it? I close my eyes, I say nothing now. There's a ringing in my ears that's faint and high. Was this always what you wanted to do, songwriting? No. In fact, I feel like I'm just kind of distracted between other things, and it's been working out for 15 years or so. But uh, I used to think I was going to be a professional football player when I was like eight years old. I never played football, American football. Yeah. I got really into making movies when I was a teenager with my friends. We we made movies, and I just thought, well, that's definitely what I want to do. That's the ultimate art form. I want to make animated movies and live-action movies. And that was kind of immediately before I started my first band, and then from there I got into recording myself and making tapes and zines and paintings and other things. I still would like to make movies someday. It seems like this, I I think of it in the same way of making an album, just with pictures as well. It seems better because making these immersive worlds that you can get into and tell a story and like, especially in a movie theater where the experience of it it's not like you have it playing in the car mm-hmm. while you're d- driving to work, but it's you're in a, mo- a dark room with this this experience being blasted at your face for an hour, hour and a half. So it's an amazing art form that I have almost no experience making just because it seems so involved. Mm. But maybe someday I'll get to. Well, the lyrics really, there's some beautiful like, attention to detail, you know, that that permeates through a lot of your work. Even like, one of the songs tonight was the the line about the the bell ringing cold and clear I thought was great um, thanks do you think that came from the films maybe the fascination with films early on uh, what, you mean having clear images in the words yeah I, gu- I guess just focusing on very distinct details in your lyrics for example I mean you kind of you use space very well I notice uh, and you can have a very small set of lyrics that say an awful lot in a song yeah, I mean, I think it's also the songs and the poems that I that jump out at me, and the literature and uh, I guess all our forms that the things that really work. Th- that's a quote I remember reading somewhere that there's power in the de- details or like specificity. I forget the quote, but mm-hmm. if somebody saying that if put in some very specific details and it makes the thing so much more powerful, even if it's. Uh, kind of a pointless detail like the color of the towel hanging in the bathroom or whatever it it makes it more real or something yeah. I don't know how it works the brain gets nailed down <laughs> I don't write reams but sometimes I cross out a lot of paragraphs and a lot of lines and then other times it just all comes out fully formed, and those are the best ones. Yeah. It's usually when I'm like sitting down, okay, I need a song now. Uh, what should the first line be? <laughs> then Does that work for you? You sit down and say, no. okay, I re- no. I mean, but I've... I've never heard of that working for anybody. I have a friend, Nick Kurgovich, who um, has, he's been playing keyboards with me on the last few tours from in Mount Erie. He does that. He is able to do that, and he writes good songs that way. And it blew my mind when I found that out. So I've been trying to do it lately, and I have had some success. It seems weird and wrong. It seems like playing an old song that you don't feel anymore. You know, it's like the type of taboo that I never would have even allowed myself to explore. But a couple of the songs I've written recently have been that way. I'm like, okay, going to work go into the studio it's the morning time I'm gonna walk down the street to my studio and like check in at my job and sit down with the notebook and just write a song 
all that stuff is in there. You don't need to wait for magic to happen. Sure. It's possible to access it. What I find will be found easily And only when I'm not looking for it Without looking for the morning in the sunset It's like this that my will to live hides implied in my heart beating without looking for fulfillment but just accepting it. Hi, this is Mount Erie, and you're listening to Two States with Danny Carroll. What advice would you give to budding songwriters then? What do you think are some pitfalls to avoid? Uh, writing songs is weird. I don't feel like an expert on it at all. I mean, for the most part, all of my songs have felt like they came out of thin air as present to me from somewhere I don't know where. But, um... Yeah, I mean, I think just write a lot and throw a lot away and say something, I guess. I think it's, oh, there's a lot of songs that just are empty that that exist because somebody feels like, well, I need 10 songs for this album or I need 12 songs. They're so dumb. There's so many horrible, dumb songs. <laughs> and I don't mean popular music. I mean, like, underground yeah. musicians, people who are doing it themselves. I feel like if you don't have something that you feel like is essential to tell the world, then keep your mouth shut. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or make instrumental music. I don't know. No, I'm think- curmudgeon. My advice is shut up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have. Um, thank you for letting me pick your brains, and and in a rather rambling way on on my part. Usually, I, I'm I'm a bit more focused than this, so I apologize in that regard. That's okay. 
Yeah, well, I'll ask you two more. I guess we kind of covered this, but... The being conscious of your back catalogue, do you ever feel the need to compare records, or... or is it just, uh, again, intuition marks the progress? I don't... I mean, I kind of consider all of them part of the same lineage. It's that not, like, separate separate things, necessarily. So it's, it's like comparing yourself at age 8 to how you were at age 10. We, <laughs> we progress through life. Well, my final question, because I, I know you appreciate the temporality of things, what song would you like played at your funeral, <laughs> Phil? <laughs> huh. That's a good one. There's so many good songs about mortality. <laughs> would it have to be mortality, do you think? No, no, I mean, I think... <laughs> I would love just some, like, crazy black metal just really loud, huge speakers, just overwhelming uh, rage. Not rage, but just like uh, upwelling of dark underground soil feeling. I can't think of a song in particular, though. Maybe Zaster. Zaster has some good songs that are just like feel like death happening in a in a punishing way. Yeah. I would want everyone else to feel that <laughs> way at my funeral. <laughs> Let them have no delusion about where they are or yeah. what's going on. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, look, thank you very much for your time, Phil. Yeah, my pleasure. Ooh. living so we lay under low wide branches of the oldest tree on the dune in the hay where we will stay for so long that the careful birds will relax and make black nests in your black hair and walk around beneath my still feet and we will only notice the play of the world for a moment And let it roll on the way the world rolls on We will only notice the world for a moment And let it roll on The world for a moment And let it roll on the way the world rolls on Give long walks to the dogs in a general
Everybody, Swain from the band The Flaming Lips. I am Bryce from The National. Hi, I'm Daniel Sack. And I'm Strubius Pip. What's up? I'm Derek. I'm Alexis, and we're Sleigh Bells. And we're Two Door Cinema Club. Sitting here with the Danny Boy. Hello, I'm John Cooper Clark. I'm Bernard Sumner. Hey, this is Tim. And I'm Mark. And we're from Ash. And you're listening to Two States. Two States. Two States with Danny Carroll. Two States. And as I say, I've got to say, it's the best radio show I've ever heard.